everyone, it's Liam with Lovely Scrappin' and I'm back with another design team project for I Am Roses. And I did two projects. One is a card and the other is a configuration box uh, that I made for my husband for Father's Day. So all of the I Am Roses product links will be on my blog. I'll post a link to my blog in the description box below. So be sure to follow my blog and check it out for all the information on the I Am Roses products used. Um, I'm going to zoom in and focus on the card first and then I'll talk about the configuration box. So just hang in there, I'll be right back. Okay guys, so this is my card and it is a 6x6 six six card and the paper collection I use for both projects is, and I finally broke it out of the hoard vault, the Tattered Time. I'll have to kind of put it like this. As most of you have probably seen, it's been out for a while. It's by DCWB and I absolutely love this paper. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun to work with and it's very, very masculine, very manly. So I figured this would be perfect for a project for my husband. So um, I used just a black card stock, card base. You can see here and then I um, did a lot of distressing with my Tim Holtz tool. Um, I just matted it with just a beige paper and then the designer paper here. Um, and then I labeled it Man of the House and that stamp, I think this was a Studio G stamp I got a long time ago. And it's Man of the House. It came from this little set here. And I just stamped it on some of the designer paper, kind of cut it into a banner type of shape, distressed the edges. All of the distressing is like with, um, I think it's with uh, walnut stain. Yeah, the Distress Walnut Stain, and in the other project it's a lot of the black soot and even some vintage photos, so I kind of did a variety of those three colors. Um, I used a bunch of gears, this gear, these gears I cut in half, and so I used, you know, a piece here, a piece here, a piece down here, um, and a piece right here for those gears, and you can kind of see here, I kind of stuck one there. Figured since how it was going to be hiding, I may as well cut it in half instead of using a bunch. So I saved a little bit. And these are, I think, the Bead Landing um, brand gears I got from Michaels. This is a Tim Holtz gear here. Tim Holtz drink, trinket pin that says um, Vintage 98. And then this is a domino. It's like kind of glossy. A domino piece I cut out from the paper collection. And then I had, um, this was an off-white burlap that I sprayed with my Lindy's. And I used... Uh, what did I use on that one? I used the um, cocoa bean copper and the dark chocolate truffle. And then I also went over it with a bit of the walnut stain distress ink around the edges. And then this was a black lace and I actually embossed it with some of my embossing powders. It was golden copper color embossing powders. I don't know if you guys can see. Let's see if I can focus. You can kind of see the shine that that gives it. And I also sprayed it with some copper, cocoa bean copper Lindy spray because I just, I didn't want it to be so bold and black. I want it to be more vintage. So that's what I did there. And I cut out a B for our last name, Bishop, on, um, from the paper collection. And then, um, this is one of those, um, one of the clocks from, what is it? From Michael, sorry. <laughs> and I distressed the inside because it was quite white, so I distressed it. I kind of watercolored it with some walnut stain distress ink. And then I put a huge layer, because it's quite deep, um, of the, the um, Mod Podge Dimensional Magic for that. And there's quite a bit in here, and it's not as expensive. So I just completely layered it in there, or not layered it, I just put a whole bunch in there and let it set overnight. And then um, for all of the little sort like indents in there instead of rhinestones I decided to use the distress stickles and I used the vintage photo one and so that kind of made it more manly not so girly bling because the distress stickles aren't quite as sparkly they're more of like a distress vintage look so that was perfect and then I just had an old vintage button I had in my stash Hopefully you guys can see that I just it's like a wood button and one here this was just a wood one I got from the dollar store a while ago and I just um, painted it with some acrylic paint distressed it with some black soot and now I'm gonna get oh and this was a ticket from the paper collection that I fussy cut as well um, and then I just layered some more on the designer paper this is a swirl clip here and then this little flower is um, one of the S10s and they can look like this. I love these. These are so perfect for filling and, and I love the two-tone brown kind of color. So that's the flower there. Um, this one here and this one here are the R21s and they come in a multi-pack. This is a multi-pack that I got and I use the brown. 
you can see it's kind of like a brown and a hint of almost a red in there. I really like it because it's kind of goes with the coppery tones in this paper collection. And then these uh, roses here are the R6 827s. And um, in the other project, I even used some of the dark brown ones, but those ones are these ones, and I distressed them with some walnut stain. And then the, the um, leaves here. Um, I'll get the code number, and of course it'll be posted on my blog, but um, there's no code number that were on these ones that came um, in the DT pack. So um, they're just, they come plain like this, and I sprayed these with some of the, this was the black um, orchid silver. And after I did that, I wanted a little bit more of like a goldy tone, and the dark chocolate truffle has a bit of like almost a gold coppery shimmer in there you can kind of even see it before it's mixed and so I sprayed it with that after and heat set it and they came out really nice I like how they turned out so that is pretty much it and I even I didn't adhere this all the way down because I figured it could be used in another configuration box after and maybe like this can go on the wall in like a little shadow box and I can just take this off and my hubby can put a photo in here of him and um or something and then this can be used elsewhere in like another configuration box for him or something so um, I didn't want to put it down permanently because I thought this would be perfect spot for you know a little shadow box on the wall type of thing and and put a picture there so that's why I did kind of a, a mat there so that's that the inside is just pretty much plain I just fussy cut some a ruler from the paper I fussy cut this and boy was it fussy <laughs> this entire piece that came from part of the paper and then I printed up happy father's day and some of you um, were asking some of the fonts that I use this is bleeding cowboys font <laughs> is the name of it so um, I printed that from, on some cardstock I distressed it with some uh, vintage photo and walnut stain and then the back again is just pretty plain just put my little label back there so that's the card I made for my hubby I really hope he likes it actually you know what this is the first card that I've ever made him so he was just like why would you make a card for me ever <laughs> so here he here he goes he gets to have this um, okay so let's move on to the configuration box okay guys so this is a configuration box bear with me I gotta get through all of these little details um, but just to let you know from scratch, um, I made this configuration box because I don't have one. So I decided to make it from, and this is obviously a smaller version of what I'm showing you here because I don't have another one this size. But anyway, it was like this. It's just a canvas I got from a dollar store. And then I, um, it's, you know, got a bit of depth to it like that. So I added a piece of chipboard to this um, for the base part. And then I added my designer paper, you know, inserted the designer paper over top of it so it's kind of seamless in this part. And then I made my own little configuration box pieces using some uh, chipboard. And I will post, post a couple pictures because I snapped a couple shots as I was making it because I knew I was going to try to explain it because um, I didn't do a tutorial. But I'll insert a couple pictures um, right in here now so you can kind of get an idea of what I did. And then um, after I had got the chipboard pieces kind of together and I did it double thick, I um, did my first decoupage, I think that's how you say it, decoupage, um, with black tissue paper and Mod Podge. And I just layered little pieces of, after a little piece after a little piece of um, tissue paper all on the little frame piece so that it um, kind of held it together nicely and I let it set overnight. And again, there'll be pictures of that. Um, and then after it was all shiny and black, um, I took some of the copper metallic solid, sorry, metallic solid bronze, not copper, and the pure gold um, full cart uh, metallic paints. And I just took it on my figure, finger as if it was rub and buff, and I just buffed up the, um, the black so it didn't look so bold and so black and shiny. So you can kind of see there I apologize about the lighting you guys but anyway you can kind of see how it's a bit distressed looking okay so that's how I got my little compartments here and then 
um, for the frame, after I inserted the, pic the paper in the back, I needed to put a clean piece here. So I just took some of the new recollection that, well, it's new that I saw at Michael's anyway. It comes in a pack like this, and it's a specialty paper of, you know, silver, sort of a gunmetal color, white, gold, and black. So that is the, I used the gold for that, and I went over it with a Tim Holtz stamp and the archival, or no, actually it stays on, black stays on ink. So I use this stamp here from Tim Holtz. You can kind of see. And I just kind of randomly twisted and turned and stamped all around the frame so that it came up like that. You can kind of see. And then it was just gold and black. So then I went over and sprayed it with um, some of the cocoa bean copper lindies. And after that, it didn't show up enough of the copper, so I took um, a paintbrush, dipped it into the cocoa bean copper, and I just painted a few highlights of the cocoa bean copper spray. And then I distressed it with the, well first I went over it with the walnut stain, and it didn't have enough of a pop that I wanted, so then I went over it with black soot along all of the edges and the inner edges, and I even distressed it with the tool too. So that was the base and the frame and everything. Um, as you can see, there's this adorable picture of my husband and my little baby girl, and that was taken shortly after she was born and we were home, and she always slept on his chest, and he just loved it, and it was their snuggle time together, and so I had to snap a picture, and it was just so so priceless. So I saved the picture and decided it would be perfect to give to him as a gift for Father's Day. So. Um, okay, let me go through what I've done here. Now, this is my very first shadow box. I got a lot of inspiration from uh, Miss Liberty, and I'll post her YouTube channel, Miranda. She's amazing. Hey, Miranda. And um, I watched a few of her shadow boxes or um, her configuration boxes, as well as a few others on YouTube. I can't remember the names because I was just kind of going through a whole bunch really quickly and just to get some inspiration on how to even, you know, make a configuration box, like what to put in it. So what I did was I took a ball chain um, and I just sort of, I'll see if I can turn it over, um, I glued it right here initially and I even I covered it up by putting my little handmade thing there and added a little clip. And so I glued it there and then I just made it so it sort of hung randomly and then came around and back and glued it into there. And then I took a little clothespin from my dollar store and I just... Um, Painted it with the uh, dark chocolate truffle, Lindy's stamp game, um, starburst spray, and then I clipped on this little Seven Gypsies calendar. And this was quite orange, so I went over it with a sharpie, and you know I kind of you know went into the August section, so it kind of turned out a little bit different. But I actually like how sort of squiggly it looks, August. And then I um, took you know my marker and. Put 17 because that was the date of how she was born and I put my beautiful daughter was born I love you on there and then I put um, one of these I'm not sure where I think this I got it in a rack and I, I don't remember or did I get it I can't remember where it came from anyway but I apologize it says a moment in time and I thought that was perfect and I distressed it with some of my alcohol ink I think that's the caramel alcohol ink and then I added a ball chain um, down in there and I'll have lots of still pictures at the end you guys so you can see um, and then a lot of the bolts I distressed or I alcohol inked with caramel. So this was a bolt. This is um, another one of those R6s. Um, I am roses. This was um, a few different gears from Tim Holtz and then uh, bead landing gear. And then a little hinge. Or what do you call it? Ball hinge things. I can't remember what they're called anyway, but <laughs> one of those little um, pieces from Tim Holtz that I actually... I screwed it all together and it worked perfectly so no glue is holding that which is kind of cool and um, this is a key from Tim Holtz that says heart it's one of the word keys and then again I added some random gears I had in my stash this here is a memento pin that I stuck up <laughs> um, so that it would hold this little hanger and it's it just I didn't glue it I could but if I did it wouldn't kind of it wouldn't move when it's upright like this so I didn't glue it down anyway so I did that because I wanted something to hang the little hanger <laughs> and then I just deci decided to add it like a stick pin here with the remaining piece and I have a few pieces from my stash that said daughter and dad so I did that put glossy accent on oh and a lot of people have been asking me what kind of adhesive I use for anything like metals um, like this all glossy accent because it works so well so I use glossy accent for most of that stuff hot glue for some stuff like for flowers I use hot glue 
um, hot glue for these pieces but anything where it's very intricate like this is all glossy accent and a lot of <laughs> patience because you have to let it set so anyway hopefully that answers your questions there's an R, another R21 this one here I don't know if you guys can make it out it's just a little teeny tiny rose and it used to be used to be this blue here this one here and it was a P3, I think it's called Dash 427. And it comes in a multi pack like this, obviously. And so I just distressed it with some of the Black Orchid Silver Lindy's, or sprayed it, I should say, and got that look. So that's that little piece there. And then there's this little configuration box here. This is a charm that my friend Becca, she's crafts.cupcake, she made that. And love it, love it, love it. And then added another um, trinket pin that says keepsake. This is a Tim Holtz button. I also broke out of my hoard stash. And then another bolt there. Um, this is, I had fun making this. Actually, I got the inspiration for making a little book from Leone. I remember seeing it as one of her dangly charms on a mini. And I thought, oh, I want to do that sometime. It's such a cute idea. So I added some more of those little bead landing, um, gears to it. Sorry about the lighting, you guys. It's really bad because it's so shadowy. Obviously, it's like a shadow box. Um, anyway, some bead landing charms that are, um, gears there. This is one of those little game spinners from Tim Holtz. And I used just the paper, designer paper for the outside and then some canvas that I heard, had already painted a long time ago for a project. So I saved a little piece and put it as like the spine of the book, which kind of look cute. And then this is just all old vintage book paper. I think it's all French. So anyway, I did that. So I made that little book and it turned out really good. And then I, um, I, uh, oh, I forgot to mention the very base of this configuration box is all this color paper and then I decided to break it up a little bit by adding squares of different of the, um, designer papers so each square is a different designer paper from the tatter time paper okay so here's a button I had in my stash a screw that I alcohol inked another gear another one of the R6 flowers this was a game piece that used to be red and I just put a sharpie on it you know to black and then I distressed like stained the wood so it wasn't so raw white like a light raw so I stained a little bit with um uh, oh I watered down a bit of the dark chocolate truffle so it wasn't so intense and then going down to this one another domino I fussy cut um, a cherished piece that I had distressed with some alcohol ink. <laughs> My husband's gonna laugh when he sees this. This is a, a rainbird sprinkler head type of thing for uh, underground irrigation. Um, he oh, he has tons of like because he works you know he's management of irrigation and whatnot so he has tons of pieces all over the place like I always get mad at him for having his work stuff all over the place anyway so I snatched one of these and different heads have different colors and this one had brown on it so I took it so it's a rainbird sprinkler head so I thought it'd be perfect to shove into his configuration box um, and then I added some more gears back there and some black screws I found hanging around in the toolbox and this is another paper clip that I distressed you know I stained with a uh, dark um, chocolate trouble. This is a little vial that had little micro beads in it and I took it out and put um, ball chain. It's copper ball chain in there and so that looked really kind of cute. And then I just tied some string along there. I think that's all that's in that. Oh and there's a little screw hiding in there too. And then going to the next one, this is a Tim Holtz ornate plate that I put on its side and then I put 2010. It's funny when you do a vertical alignment on the computer, the one goes over slightly and I couldn't hear to make it go over. Oh, it was a pain in the butt. But anyway, so it's kind of like that. That's just the way it comes up. But anyway, 2010, that's the year my daughter was born. And I glossy accented that in there and I kind of raised it on foam pieces in the back. This is a ruler piece from the paper collection that I fussy cut and distressed and kind of made it so it's sort of a cur oh sorry you guys it's sort of it curls up so it's dimensional and then I added some more screws again those are all these glossy accents for all of that to adhere it down a game spinner I really apologize for the shadow it's really hard to show you guys this without having so much of a shadow and then some more this is an R21 from that same pack I showed you and then another um, what's that one R6 and then um, a washer and a bolt. These ones were brand new, so they weren't as distressed looking, so I put lots of alcohol ink on them using the caramel color. Another gear I've got sitting there. I think that covers everything in that one. 
And then this one, again, I mentioned the little hanger. That's a Tim Holtz hanger. Uh, Tim Holtz word key. It says love. This is a spool I had that I had stained with the cocoa bean copper and then um, distressed it with some black soot and then I put some string along there. Added a little button. Again, I had lots of buttons in my stash. And this is a penny farthing, I think that's how you say it, a bottle cap charm that Becca Crafts Cupcakes also made and sent in a swap. And then some gears back there. And then again, some leaves from my roses that I showed previously, and I did the same type of technique with the black orchid um, silver Lindy's um, spray, as well as the dark chocolate truffle. Another gear there, and then a domino piece that I used some alcohol ink on. I think I used the latte color alcohol ink to just sort of tone it down because it was quite white um, or quite cream. And then this is just a bow bunny brad piece that I had in my stash. And then this is. Um, one of those word, or what do you call them? I can't remember what they're called, but um, anyway, they're from Tim Holtz. It says Destiny, another swirl clip that I put on one of those um, little... So one of those things from Tim Holtz as well. And then, yeah, that is that. And then for the base, like the canvas portion of it, I just went over it with the um, black acrylic paint, and then I just splotched over it with the the gold and the, the um, bronze color that I showed previously and I just sort of went over it until I got the look that I liked and I didn't put Mod Podge on it because I wanted like a matte somewhat of a matte type fin finish with a bit of shimmer from the uh, metallic paint so I really like how that turned out and then this here I also I got the inspiration for adding the little handle from um, Miranda and I had this handle already and I got it from Home Depot and it was sort of like this black copper type of a thing and then I went over it with sandpaper to bring out a bit more of the copper and then um, I wanted a bit more copper so I went over it with the kind of a is it copper or bronze um, alcohol ink to get a bit more of that kind of a color so I really like how that turned out and I used glossy accents to adhere it down so anyways guys that is the configuration box Hi. anyway I really hope he likes it I can't wait to give it to him on Father's Day and um, I'm gonna have my my daughter hand it to him so Anyways, guys, I hope you like it. Be sure to um, check out my blog for, again, some details on the I Am Roses used. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Take care. Bye now.